going on guys? I'm Zach from Study Stream Casios. This is our 2019 Sprinter 4x4, 170 extended. I'm not a professional, nor do I claim to be a professional. Everything I say, take it with a grain of salt. Let's get started. First things first, you do have to remove the seats. Let's do that. So first things first is to remove these four bolts. I don't have the right one, but what does work is a number 10. There, it actually does work. Um, obviously don't want to try to tighten too hard because you might mess the bolt up, but it obviously does work. So the seat is out of the way. So that's the wiring for the seat. You can see that obviously that big hole that you see, like you see this, like so we've got the two screws, bolt holes. Then the other one is the fuel line. So the fuel line, it'll go like so. So it actually fits kind of nicely. Um, so obviously this van doesn't have anything right here in a USB port. So you know, obviously it'll suck air, suck air from here, but I'm, what I'm gonna do, you can buy the slatted panel um, from DIY van. What I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna put a, another uh, black, like small circular vent right here, just to ensure that it's got enough ventilation. It'll be like this, obviously, then it'll come out right here. Secure this so it's not in the way and it's not touching that, because I don't want those wires touching this. And it comes with this gasket to put down first self tappers so now i think i'm just gonna mark the holes it's like i said this plug is in the center of the frame rails this is in the center still obviously um so it looks really good there are the holes obviously now i need to drill these holes um i need to drill this hole because this hole is for the fuel line and these will just be where the uh screws are or where the bolts go through so i need to drill those as well okay so drilled all the holes, all drilled out, I vacuumed everything. Now what I'm gonna do, take a little deburring tool, deburr around the holes, and then what I'll do is I'll put some paint. You def, this is a wood, obviously since it's going to be exposed down below, it'll be a rust prone area. So you definitely wanna make sure you put enough paint on these holes. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably come spray paint this. Um, it's not seen, you know, obviously, so it doesn't matter like really what it looks like. Um, so I'll spray paint here. I'll spray paint underneath as well. Okay, as you can see, heater is mounted. So I drilled the holes. So for this big, the bigger exhaust holes, inlet and exhaust, I did inch and an eighth hole saw. And uh, then I just drilled the holes for the bolts and for the fuel line. As you can see, obviously it's painted. I painted it before just to make sure but the fuel line is accessible and these are accessible as well. So that, now that that's bolted, now it's time to start working on the wiring. Okay, and for the positive, for the 12 volts, we're gonna come here from the van battery. Okay, go well here. And the center one, so the center one is 12 volt all the time. So that's what we're gonna use. Obviously, because if the van is not running, we still want to use this. Um, you can always rewire it to your house batteries. In this case, we're not. House batteries are in the back. People do this all the time to the van battery and have no issues whatsoever. Factory ground. I think it's underneath this. You can, we're gonna move this here in a second. Um, if once I find it, I'll show you. So if you see right there, and then down in here, down in here, down in there, there's a nut. What you do is you'll take these off. And when you take them off, so that just pops right out of place. And as you can see right there is the factory ground that we will ground our system to. And then there's the mess of wires that run from underneath. Obviously, this is the channel that runs from seat to seat. 
that's where we'll be running our wires through. And uh, obviously, like I said, you connect the positives, everything like that. Okay, so for this specific kit, obviously you'll connect it here, there, and it's got this slew of wire connectors. I'm thinking the only one we'll need is there. We'll have to make the connection for the um, thermostat, the controller, you know, whatever you want to call it, thermostat controller, the Easy Start Pro controller. And then what you got is a slew of wires. The only one I think you'll need are these. It's a red and a brown. So the brown is the ground, the red is a positive. So we'll have to run this down through there. And what you do is you put a connector, a crimper on the red one. Come on, focus. Crimper, or crimp connector on the red one, you push it in there. And then this obviously goes to the positive terminal. And then you'll eventually put your fuse in there, channel between the seats. I'm not quite sure what that's for. Not quite sure what that's for either. So don't mess with it. And then this says, do not do not use for analog controls only, insulate wire ends. So we'll have to put something on that end so that these wires aren't exposed. So I was able to remove the floor mat up. Remove this, it's just two 10 millimeter nuts um, to better help me remove this, pull it up. That's where all the wires go underneath there so then you're able to slide it. As you can see, it's right there. So I've got enough slack in here, so now, Snap that back down. Then I'll put these nuts back on here, put the floor mat back down, and then get started over there. This was the terminal ring that they had on there. Way, it was too big. So I put on here, I was gonna be touching this other side. You can see how big it is. It's gonna be touching the other side, I didn't like that. So I cut it off, and I put another smaller one. So I put it on there. I'm gonna wrap it around like this. So it'll work like that, secure it, and then once we're done, eventually, I'll come put the fuse in. So for all the excess wiring, I looped it in a hole, and I've got these uh, 3M adhesive cable tie mounts, so I'll mount it all to here so that it's just nice and clean. So now it's time for me to connect the Control Easy Start Pro controller wires. Um, you have to pre-make that connection afterwards to run it. What I'm gonna do, because obviously you can see we've got the build out already done, um, finished. It would be too hard for me to take the fridge out. I want to run it up there and put it on the side of that cabinet, but the rib literally starts right there and so it's blocking me. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some wire loom, some good uh, heavy duty wire loom. I'm gonna drill a hole. I might even use this plug right here because I do have to put a slit in this plug gonna use that and what that's gonna do is I'm gonna run the wire down through there tuck it up nice and neat underneath the van come up where all the rest of some of my electrical comes and it's gonna put on this side of the cabinet right here that's right on here um, go check out our tour but there's a cabinet right there put on that side where they've got other switches things like that so that way when you're in bed in the morning it's cold you can turn it on without getting up I'm gonna zip tie it um, so it's not hanging down, doesn't get caught on anything. I'm gonna put in wire loom and uh, I'm gonna put my grommet or something, you know, it's gonna be secured nice and tight. There's, an, I think there's plenty of uh, wire to do that. And uh, the only other thing I think I have to do is I've gotta make up the wire for the fuel pump. Big seat's looking really nice. And uh, so I'm done in there except for putting the fuse on. I'm gonna to wait to put the fuse on until I'm totally ready. I need to go get, I've got so many hole saws, except for a two and three quarters. So I need to go get a two and three quarters for that vent, for this exhaust vent, and uh, that's about it. So, like I said, in order to run my wires for my fuel pump and uh, for the Easy Start Pro controller, this plug right here, what I did was I cut a slit in it. Let's see if we can figure that out. Okay. So what I did was I cut a slit in it. And then I shoved the wires through there, put the plug back in. So that way it's like a little grommet. If I want to at the end, once I get everything nice and tight, I can uh, put some sealant there just to ensure that nothing's gonna come through there. Like I said, got my wires. These are the ends that need the connectors put on to connect to the controller, connect for the fuel pump. So I've got my hole for my exit. And again, 
just gonna sit here. So I've got that installed. So pre-drilled some holes and then I use some sheet metal screws, small sheet metal screws. So you can see it's there. So now I can attach that. I can pop the vent, little louver on now. And if I didn't mention, in order to cut to drill at that hole, two and three quarters works best. Two and three quarters. So for the fuel pump connection that you have to make, you need to add these crimp crimpers on here. So what you'll do is you you'll splice it, put the crimpers, and then what you do is you want to get it to how it is. So it needs to be this way. There's a little connector that will go in on the other side. But you'll push it until you hear that little click, and that means it's in. You'll push these little red little stoppers in, and then you will just push the red stoppers, come on. And then, I guess you'll just press until you connect it, and now you have your connection. So now it can be plugged in underneath the seat and then obviously the only other connection we have to make up underneath here to the fuel pump is this connection that will connect right to the fuel pump. So this connector here is a little more tricky. So what I found was easiest was to remove this orange plug, slide the wires through, make sure that you, you want your wires obviously colors to colors. So look at how this connector is, put these wires in the same, um, like same holes, it's where they all connect to each other. And then once you got it in, then you'll crimp your little connectors. I mean, these connectors are like, they're really small. Um, just take your time. And so then once you crimp them, you just push them in until you hear it click. Once you hear it click, all four of them, then you see that little orange plug. You gotta slide that orange plug in to where you see there, there's one connector, one connector, one connector, one connector. It's got little slots and it just you push it right in. So what you need to do is just take your time. Um, this kit gives you extra crimp connectors. Remove that little orange plug, slide the wires through, crimp them, push them in, then push this orange plug in. And then you can just connect it. Now that everything is finished in here, obviously the only thing I will do is I will have um, excess wire for the fuel pump. So whatever's excess, I'll come in here. I'll tidy it up, um, wrap it how that is so what I'm gonna do now fuel line fuel pump so this fuel pump if you notice right here it says like if you look on yours it'll say fuel with an arrow this way um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an arrow just to make sure that when I'm hooking it up that uh, I don't mess it up so I will draw an arrow on there the muffler so I'll do the exhaust um, do my fuel lines my intake exhaust and uh, so on the fuel line so you notice a lot of vans sometimes this one this van came with the KL1 accessory whatever you want to call it this comes with this little hose kit and it says attach directly to KL1 fitting and I tested it and it does like you can buy that extra little doorman fitting that you know connects on this connects on you put a hose clamp I don't necessarily know why you'd have to buy that I know some people do but this ho this kit now comes with this. So maybe they knew that instead you don't need it anymore. So I mean it says attached directly. That means directly. So comes with the hose clamps, uh, more hoses as well, so that your fuel line uh, can fit. So we're gonna do that. So right here is the KL1 adapter where you will uh, fit in. Like I told you, I was gonna put an arrow just to make sure that I ran the fuel right way so the fuel from the adapter will plug into here i'm going to mount it right around in here so that i come in pop in and then i'll run above the uh drive shaft the um, exhaust manifold and then up into the heater itself to give it fuel and so it comes with a um you know little mount little clamp a holding mount it's rubber um, so just be careful installing it that you don't um, Let me put it right here. So I need to go drill a hole real quick and then I can run the wire snap in. Yeah, it looks good Okay, so I'll put it right there 
That looks really good. I can go in between there and there. Do a little pilot hole. And then I'll use a big self tapper that I've got to just lock that in place. So I like the way that looks, my connection, I can, you know, put a little loop, curve it into there. Oh, man. Okay, so that is the fuel pump. One thing that you'll notice when I installed it is that I had it at an angle too, too great. So it was more like this, and it was causing an error in the Easy Start uh, controller. And so it said air fuel pump. So after doing a little bit of research, it's because I had it at too much of an angle. So you want to don't have it at too much of an angle. Um, you know, like this way, kind of not flat, but probably anywhere from like 15 to 25 degrees, I'd say. Um, and once I did that, then it started working properly. Okay, so fuel line. So like I said, I'm going to pop right into there. Um, so I don't need too much, if anything at all. It's just some plastic fuel lines, so do be careful. Um, so, what I'm gonna do is, like so, I'm just gonna pop right into there, like that. Just this little U shape. I think you can see that, maybe. This little U, just gonna pop in. So, I'm gonna cut this, just some electrical cutters, just real quick, snip it does fine so from here this is the one that says attached directly to KL1 so right here I'm gonna attach my fuel line into here make sure I go pretty good ways what I'd probably suggest is take a marker put a little tick mark or something you know that hey that's a good bit in there just to see how far you actually go in I think that goes on there, there, yes. So I'll put another end here. This piece will go on to my fuel pump. I'm gonna slide it in. And then we're gonna pull that off. Slide it on. And tighten it. That's pretty tight. Okay, so now, like I said, once I remove this, there might be a little bit of fuel that comes out. Um, but we'll see. But this is the part that attached says it attached directly to KL1. So you see a pull. Pull that off. Slide that on. It fits perfectly. So, just gonna tighten that up. And uh, we're good and snug. So there's your fuel line from the tank, your fuel tank, to the pump, and the pump will then, obviously, push it that way to the heater. Now I've gotta get another attachment, another hose, that'll come to here, and then I'll run the fuel line all the way back to the actual pump, um, heater itself. And actually by now, too, what I can, is I can bring all of these wires over to, to connect the fuel pump, just so we can finish off everything over there. As you can see, this will connect to your fuel pump. So you've got this little clip right there. You heard it snap. So we're good. So everything's golden. So I've attached the hose piece to that. So now I'm gonna put a hose clamp on it, tighten it up. Make sure you put the hose clamps where you can actually get the drill or your you know socket, everything like that. So I can get that up in there. I'll be able to tighten that because what you still have to do is still have to do your uh, your inlet and your exit. So just make sure you got room to tighten it. I'll uh, get to it later on if for some crazy reason you need to. So I like it like that. So I'll tighten that and then I'll do another hose clamp and then I'll put my fuel line on as well. Now that I've got that installed, I will now do the inlet. And so if you notice, there's this gray box right here. What that gray box is on these newer vans. I don't know if they're rocked on older vans, but newer vans, if you go on the passenger side, you notice that's where your jack and everything is. So it's got this nice little area for you to put this uh, exhaust inlet. Just hang out in there, and that way it's not down, hanging down. Um, won't get, I mean, like, yeah, you'll get some dust up there, here and there, depending on where you go. But obviously the mud flap, everything's in the way. So it's a nice little area to stash 
the exhaust, um, not the exhaust, but the inlet, air inlet hose. So that's where you'll be sucking the air from for there, for the actual heater itself. And this obviously will be the exhaust. So let's go ahead and do this one. I'll show you. You just need to, you need to cut the hose just kind of short and we'll go ahead and hose clamp it and install it. In your goodie bag kit for all these hoses, you'll see a bunch of different hose clamps. Like I said, we're gonna go ahead and cut it. I'm probably just gonna cut it about here. You don't need much. And then obviously I'm gonna snap this on. So honestly, I can snap this on right here. Okay, so like I said, this first one is for uh, your inlet. So like I said, you can just shove it up through here. You can just pop that on just like that. And you're just sitting in here and it's gonna get all the airflow that it needs. And the next, we're gonna do the exhaust and muffler. Comes out from there, runs, and goes right behind the front mud flap. That is that for the full install. Well, no, still gonna run that all the way to the back. I'll show you how I did that in the wire loom, but you know, depending on where you wanna put that, that's all to you, but man, that's pretty hot. It's blowing really good. So and that is it for the install. I'll show you where I mounted. I've got to wipe off the dirty fingers, but just along with everything else that we have, the Renogy inverters, light switches, put it right here so you can get it from bed. Down through the van I already had a hole, ran it down to there, had plenty enough for me to get all the way from there. Um, I'll show you how it ran it underneath. So, Make it a little brighter. So there it is, all along. Goes through those holes, holes. What's up, pup? Goes all the way through there and then up and through there. I just made sure it was away from, you know, like this is near, you know, the exhaust and it's fine. So it's that far away. I think it's really, really good. And it uh, goes back in. So that's that for the install. Pretty simple, time consuming a bit. Um, I would say the thing that you need to focus on the most, take your time on the most, is the electrical crimpings, putting those plugs together. Um, other than that, this harness is really easy. I've heard of nightmares for, from other harnesses from different companies. It seems like the companies make the harnesses for, these, for their kits that they sell. Stay steady.